Hello YouTube, this is Verla Gossip. Two years ago I made a very simple tutorial about how to make a very basic machine. Today I will teach you how to improve your machine and make it contain really great and interesting ideas that people want to watch. Let's begin. Step 1. Plan out the layout of your machine. This does not have to be an elaborate drawing of every single part of the machine. This doesn't even have to show what your machine contains. Usually, most of your machine is thought out while you are building it. All this layout shows is that you know where the machine will start, the goal of your machine, and at least one of your main ideas inside it. This layout can be drawn on a piece of paper, mapped out on a computer, or done completely inside your head. I often choose the last option. Note that you do not have to stick with the layout while you are building the machine. If it doesn't seem to work, change it. But make sure that while you are building your machine, you have some idea of what its goal is and where it is supposed to end. Step 2. Split every step of your Rube Goldberg machine into three different categories. Main ideas, secondary ideas, and connectors. Your main ideas are the things that are supposed to impress the viewer and make them really love your machine. A beginner's Rube Goldberg machine may have one main idea. My last machine had four, and some of the most amazing machines on YouTube have had up to 12 main ideas. However, how good your machine is does not only depend on how many main ideas there are. Quality of the main ideas is just as important, if not more important, than their quantity. In order to impress a viewer with your machine, the main ideas have to be very creative. A good main idea is either made out of very large objects that one might use every day, or it is an extremely complex contraption with tracks and other platforms used many times. I will explain this in detail later. This is an example of a main idea. It was the most important part in my last machine, and it was the part that impressed my viewers the most. Secondary ideas are also a large part of the machine, but they are not as impressive to look at as the main ideas. They are what make the machine longer, yet still interesting to look at. It is important to put secondary ideas in the right place. Too many secondary ideas in a row might make the machine boring, while not enough secondary ideas might make the machine too short. I would say you, that you would, should have anywhere from 1 to 1.5 times as many secondary ideas as main ideas. But do not put any more than two secondary ideas between two main ideas. This is an example of a secondary idea. It is not as good as the main idea, but it isn't boring to watch, but it does, because it does involve electricity. Connectors connect the main and secondary ideas to each other. They are the least exciting part of a Rube Goldberg machine. Connectors include dominoes, commercial marble runs, popsicle stick chains, and so on. They are only used when they are absolutely needed. No two connectors should ever be placed in a row. This is an example of a connector, dominoes. I couldn't pull the string to release the next idea in any other way, so I had to use a connector. Make sure to keep this in mind in the next step when you are actually building your machine. Step 3. Think of how to make your main ideas. This is often the hardest part, and often you can't think of anything, and you have run out of ideas. This is called builder's block. When you run out of ideas, it is often helpful to look at YouTube at other people's machines. Feel free to look at some of my videos. Here are 50 Rube Goldberg ideas that can be used in your own machine, and here's a playlist of all the Rube Goldbergs that I've ever made. Now that I'm done shamelessly advertising my own videos, here is some advice. Don't just copy the idea directly from a YouTube video, unless it is a secondary idea. If you're making a main idea, you should alter it in some way, or make a completely different idea. You want to make a machine your own, and not just copy someone else's work. Step 4. Build all the main ideas of your machine. Note that you will have to build them again in a different order if you want your machine to have a smaller amount of fails. Test each one 10 times to see how well it works. If you get any less than 9 successes, work on it and adjust it to improve its success rate. In the actual machine, the success rate of the ideal will be a lot lower than if you just let the ideal work by itself. If it works 9 out of 10 times alone, then it should work about 6.5 out of 10 times in the machine. Unfortunately, this fact cannot be fixed. The main idea that requires the least setup should be in the first idea of the machine. The most important or most creative main idea should appear close to the center. 
The main idea that fails the least should be close to the end of the machine. The only exception to those three rules would be if an idea contains an object that can't be moved out around a room, such as a sink. Step 5. Fill the machine in with secondary ideas. These do not have to be original ideas at all. They can be directly copied off the internet, and they're not meant to be the focus of your machine. These will just keep the viewer entertained for a longer while, and they'll make your machine last longer. Watch out for the secondary ideas, because they can sometimes be the main cause of failures if they're not built correctly. Use the same procedure with them as you did with the main ideas. Test them ten times and fix them until they work at least nine. This time you don't have to move them. The secondary ideas are also the ones that are really annoying and often break down overnight. Sometimes you would have to add more tape, but at other times there's no way to fix that. And you either have to reset it every single time and it breaks down, or completely abandon the idea. This brings up another point. Don't be afraid to scrap ideas if they don't work properly. If something fails too much and there is nothing you can do, don't waste your time. Abandon that idea, no matter how bad it feels. Once you're done with the secondary ideas, fill the rest of the machine with connectors. If, when you look at the machine, you want to make it longer, then you can add another main idea to one, followed by a secondary idea and maybe a connector. If you don't have a main idea, look at the internet and copy a few secondary ideas. The possibility of lengthening your machine is why you always build your goal last. I will talk about that later. Finally, locate every part of your machine that is not going to move inside the machine, such as supports, non-moving tracks and boards, and secure them with nothing weaker than all-purpose, heavy-duty duct tape. This is important because if you don't do this, stuff will get knocked down by accident and you will get angry. Anything weaker than heavy-duty duct tape will wear off and you will have to keep reapplying the tape. If you don't have this tape, buy it because it's cheap. Step 6. Some objects, when used in either the main or secondary ideas of your machine, automatically make it cooler to watch. These objects are electricity, such as a fan, water, such as a sink, an iPad, or other technology, and finally, a flashlight, using an idea I have never implemented. The more foreign objects you use, the better. Another very useful thing is the three pound weight. If attached to a string, this can pull absolutely anything you want it to. People are interested in seeing big things move in Rube Goldberg machines, and three pound weights are moderately easy to knock down, and can pull any large objects you want them to. Finally, billiard balls are the things I enjoy to use the most. They don't knock down as much as a three pound weight does, but they can roll and be used as a heavy weight at the same time, which is really great. Step 7. Think of a creative goal. Unfortunately, this is harder than you think. Sometimes, goals can be bad and unoriginal, and that's because there are already Rube Goldberg machines that do very many things. The goals that haven't been accomplished yet by a machine are extremely hard or impossible to accomplish with a Rube Goldberg machine. If you can't think of a goal, make a themed machine. Themes are much easier to think of than goals. I have made some themed machines and also some machines with goals. Feel free to check them out. Step 8. Work as much as you can in one day, but take breaks. The process of building a machine should be fun for you. Don't get too stressed or panicked. There will be days which you can't think of any ideas, and on those days you don't have to work on the machine. However, there will always be days where you get sudden urges of creativity, and that is when you have to start working as much as possible. If you suddenly get an idea at home or somewhere else, and you happen to have a piece of paper nearby, draw a basic diagram of the idea. I've never used that strategy because I can't draw, but it might work for you. When you are working on the machine, sometimes listening to music helps the time pass, especially after the machine failed and you're setting it back up. Step 9. When you're building the machine, set up safety breaks, such as gaps between dominoes or a block of wood in the middle of a track. This is so that if the machine gets suddenly set off by accident, it won't go too far. Always remember to remove the safety brakes before you set off the machine. You will get very angry if you fail because a safety brake wasn't removed. Step 10. After you've built everything, you are ready to set the entire machine off. Beware, it will not work on the first try. It will probably not work within the first 20 tries unless you're lucky. You have to have patience when working on a machine. Don't get discouraged if it fails 50 times, 100 times, or even 200 times. Fails are a huge part of making your Rube Goldberg machine, and they're inevitable. 
Take note of the things that fail more than once and try to fix them as much as possible. Again, use a strategy where if an idea is tested 10 times and doesn't work 9, it must be fixed. Step 11. Have fun! Enjoy the process. Making a Goldberg machine is great, and it will be amazing when you finally finish. It is the best feeling in the world when you see your work pay off, and I hope you have a great time building your own machine. If your machine works, feel free to scream in happiness, because it's so awesome to see that your work is finally done. Good luck, and thanks for watching.